Hey everybody, it's Gary here. And when we started this project, I promised you that I would show you all the different tools that I use to get these products delivered, to get these projects done, and to get some success out of my activities. Now I also told you that I'm not a big fan of free tools because I like a tool that's optimized, that's developed real nicely, is easy to use, and is supported, and you just aren't going to get that with free tools. Now I will tell you that every single thing I'm about to tell you about can be found in a free version, but I just don't believe in them because I've never had good success with them. They always end up costing me more money trying to get them going, trying to do the workarounds, all the different things that you have to deal with with a free tool, and that's why I don't use them. So anyhow, let's go down the list and I'll tell you what I do, how I use it, and why I use it. Now obviously I'm biased, but the primary tool that I'm going to use for this business is going to be CloudNet 360. The reason this tool works so well is because everything is integrated into one system. This becomes a huge time saver because not only is everything under one roof, but I only have to learn the logic and the menus and the psychology of the product for one product. I don't have to learn the logic and the menus and everything else that goes along with the product five times, six times, or seven times because everything in CloudNet 360 is going to work the same basic way. My CRM will work like my project manager. The project manager will work like my storefront. The storefront will work like my shopping cart. It just makes it infinitely easier to learn and to use day in and day out. So I can put my website into the system. I'll have my lead generation tools with live chat and click to call. I'll have my CRM and autoresponders built in, plus it has a very exclusive survey system that nobody else has. It's the only true live active segmentation survey tool that works automatically within your CRM. I'll be able to run all my e-commerce right through the shopping cart. I'll have my affiliate system, although in this case, I don't really plan on using affiliates to promote this product because it's going to be a freemium item. Now, the scheduling system is another tool that, while included, I don't really see a need for it in this business, but again, it's already included. If something does come up like private coaching sessions or anything of that nature, the system will already be there and the functionality will already be familiar to me because I will already be familiar with the way the rest of the system operates. The membership system is a tool I will very likely use because I'm sure there's going to be an opportunity for private tutoring, private lessons, private coaching, private video. I'm not sure what or how many of those will actually become part of the system, but again, it's already built in, so it's very likely that I'm going to take advantage of it. The project manager is something we've already discussed, and I cover this in greater detail. But I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to run your business through a project manager. The ticket system is something I use for every business because I never want to run support through email. A, it looks unprofessional, and B, it just doesn't work very well. If you want to keep your support organized, you have to use a real ticket system to do that. And of course, I like running my business anywhere I go, so having mobile apps is really important to me. And having an e-business advisor is definitely going to help you as you roll out different strategies, as you try to implement your different tools. Now there are two other tools that I use on a daily basis. And in fact, I'm using one of the tools right now to record this video. And it's also the same tool I will use to edit all these videos and splice them together to make one cohesive video. I like to use Camtasia because it's easy to use, it's easy to edit, it has all the tools I need, including animation tools and screen draw tools and boxes and all the little things that turn a regular video into a professional quality video. And from a communication standpoint, you really cannot do any better than sending a video to someone to show them how a system is supposed to operate, to explain something, to highlight exactly what you've just written down on the spec. What I will actually do with Camtasia is write a spec, I'll do a screenshot, and then I will record the entire spec going through step by step, item by item, screenshot by screenshot, and explain what everything means. Now I've got it covered in writing, I have it covered as a screenshot, and I have it covered in video, because I really want to over communicate what I want from my service providers, and in this case, it's usually software engineers. 
Now for graphical work, I like to use Snagit. Snagit is obviously never going to be as powerful as something like Photoshop, but if you're not a professional graphic artist, Snagit is a great compromise tool because it makes it really easy to take screenshots and then manipulate it, move it around, add components, combine components of your screenshots. You can add annotations, you can put text in there, you can do all sorts of different things for these images. And it's not a bad photo editor, it's just not as good as Photoshop, it's not as powerful, and you can't do as many things. But for most people, it's an excellent tool because it's more powerful than the very basic tools like Paint, and it's not as complicated as Photoshop. But if you want to capture a screenshot off your computer or multiple screenshots from your computer and combine them with other graphics or to make a mock-up that you will then give to your graphic designer so that they can take that and turn it into the finished product, Snagit is a great tool for that purpose. So let me go ahead and show you an example of what I started with, gave it to the graphic designers, and then what they converted my screenshot into after they saw my mock-up and after I created a Camtasia video to explain each and every component of that mockup. In the case of this software, there's going to be two different players and two different editors for this system. So what you see here is called the Easy Editor, and this is the editor that we want to provide so that people can do a very simple, basic type of editing function without the entire intimidation of trying to learn time tracks and video tracks and audio tracks and all those different things that come with a more hardcore video editor. So what I did was create the basic layout using different blocks and descriptions and just positioning where icons should go and how the filters would go in and the different things that will make up this editor. And sometimes you just take screenshots of different graphics and paste them in there as representation of what it is that you want. Next, I'll take a video of this and I'll explain every single component. I'll talk about how I want the video player to work, how I want these standard controls to be laid out, what the jump button does and what it should look like and what each of these icons should actually look like and do, except I'm not really setting the design. I'm just giving the graphic designers the concept and the understanding of what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. And then I let them cut loose and provide the creativity and their design talent to give me a final product. So now let's go take a look at what this becomes when we convert this from a block diagram a graphical representation with a video and into a final graphical design. And this is what the final version looks like. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now this looks like a real professional piece of software and people do judge a book by its cover. So you want your product to look as good as it operates. Now let's go take a look at the same process we followed to create the coaches cut, which is the more complex version of this editor. Here again, we followed the exact same process. We took the existing elements from the Easy Player that we just created, and then we added the additional components that we needed. Some of them are really bad block diagrams, and other pieces will actually copy and paste from other applications because they more closely represent what it is that we want. Now I also copied and pasted a button design that I liked, and of course we had to change it, but it gave the designers a good representation of what I was trying to accomplish. If I were just to provide this screenshot in a written spec, I would expect to get something back that doesn't actually meet my needs and it's not going to be what I want. You would think that with a written spec and a screenshot, you would always get exactly what you want. But people need to understand not only what you've put on the paper, but they need to understand the why. What are you trying to accomplish? How do you want people to interact with this system? And what is your primary objective? When the designers know all that information, I guarantee they will give you a much better product in the end. And now let's go take a look at what they did for me. And just as they did with the Easy Editor design, they knocked this one out of the park and gave me just an awesome design. This type of design makes our product look so professional and so refined that people will just naturally think it's a better product because it looks so good. Of course, there's another benefit to having this type of design done up front because now the programmers are going to be able to understand exactly what every function of this system is supposed to do because we can go through it piece by piece, bit by bit, and not only explain it, but explain it from a graphical representation so it all makes sense in their head as they create this code. Communication is critical 
And doing it in this order makes the communication a hundred times better. It saves your project from being late, it keeps it under budget, and it gives you exactly what you want. And finally, we use Office 365 for the spreadsheets and Word documents and anything else that we might need from your general everyday basic Office applications. Well, that's it. That's the totality of the items that I need to get a product completed and pushed out the door. I think you can see that the cost is fairly reasonable, even if you're using the full cost versions like I use. And of course, you can always get a free item here or push some of the hardware costs down just a little bit to get going if you're really on a budget. But I guarantee if you use these items, you'll hit the ground running and have a great chance at getting your product completed, done, and out the door.